Hello, welcome back to Access. I'm Nathan and I'm here with Jason, who is the director for the campaign and the zombie modes uh, on Call of Duty Black Ops 3, showing us a huge presentation today. Loads of amazing stuff. Um, the thing that kind of really struck me was where we are now with the story and what that means for gameplay in terms of technology. So could you tell us where we are, how we got there, and what does it mean for the people with stuff in their brains? Wow, um, so we're in 2065. Mm -hmm. uh, when we left off Black Ops 2 at 2025, and uh, the most cutting edge technology of the day is called DNI, or Direct Neural Interface. And that basically plugs into a soldier and gives them control over uh, physical augmentations mm -hmm. uh, and as well kind of connects each soldier to each other, allowing them to kind of communicate information really quickly. So this is the, this was the really kind of new stuff. You were talking to us about, um, so there's various kind of, there's a tactical rig. Um, I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> and there's uh, on the, on the laid out on the ground, one of the most uh, kind of impressive things, I think for kind of, I'm thinking about kind of gameplay impact. Sure. Uh, was a, a, a layout and, and it kind of was like a threat map. Yeah, T mode, yeah, tactical mode. So it means that when you've got kind of cop players in your game, it's not about just more bullets down the range. Actually where they move and what they can see actually dictates uh, information. And you can switch this mode on, it's level agnostic, you can switch it on at any point, and it'll tell you things like, yeah, threat maps. It'll also tell you like the range that an explosion will do, so you can kind of step out of the, the range of a grenade going off. But it tells you like how many people can shoot you if you stand at a certain point, what the kind of enemy types are, uh, lots of kind of fun stuff. Yeah. And talking about um, the the structure of campaign, I was very surprised, uh, pleased, um, and it's actually it's a joke in a Dar O'Brien kind of routine, isn't it? About <laughs> um, about being good enough to get all the content you've already paid for, right. and you're just letting us have that at the beginning of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, this campaign is the first time that we've we've given everyone to access to it. You know, I, I call it the book method, right? If you buy a book, you can you can read the last page if you want. Yeah. So all the all the uh, campaign maps, you can go there. If you jump to the last map, we'll warn you and say, hey, you might be spoiling the story for yourself, but it's your content. You bought it, so uh, you can play it. Uh, and it's, that's the first reason. The second reason was because it's a very a cop game all those modes are actually online now we didn't want to put any barriers in place so if you're at level eight and i'm at level two i can join in on your on your map on your game play it you can lend me equipment because you're more advanced uh, we support all that so it's really kind of the most kind of community uh social campaign we've ever created I think that's realistic as well, just in the way that we play games now. And you were talking specifically about it being a co-op experience and there being two ways to build a co-op co game. Can you yeah. kind of walk us through that? <laughs> sure. So yeah, the, the simple way of describing it is two ways to make a co-op game. First one is to make a single player game and put four people in it. Yeah. <laughs> and the second way is to make a co-op game. And that means every single aspect, you know, the spatial consideration, the, the AI, uh, the customizable abilities, uh, all these things are considered with co-op mind. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you have to take a very systemic approach, which means everything is level agnostic. Everything kind of works no matter where you are in the campaign. And obviously that's going to impact replayability. It's going to make it more replayable, but also means, because I had a very short hands-on, which I, unfortunately I think you saw, <laughs> where um, I, we got lost really quickly. And it's because <laughs> And it, but it's good though because it means there's multiple routes and the, the levels are kind of big and expansive yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are the biggest campaign maps you've ever created with multiple pathways through there. Um, and it's really kind of a, a tactical decision. You know, you can play it kind of old school Call of Duty style and just kind of run forward, but how you move through the spaces, you know, whether you're taking a high path, a low path, going inside buildings, um, and then the abilities that you have. Certain abilities are better at distance, other ones kind of give your team uh, maybe some sort of defensive abilities as well, kind of close up. So, uh, and then with a the new AI system, which also treats distance and proximity to different threats in different ways, you really have to kind of think about it, uh, you know, based on what equipment you've got, what cyber cores you've got, what tech rigs you've got, and how you're going to approach the battlefield. What I'm, what I'm taking from that is that you're saying I'm going to get better, which is Look, which is a yeah, good thing. Um, so there's so much to talk about. I, I wanted to talk quickly about um, safe houses because they looked really. I mean, and as part of the kind of the co-op experience, you were talking about there being tons of Easter eggs mm. in there um, as well, and that kind of being a I hub. Of, saying that. Oh. <laughs> well, this is a well, secret information. <laughs> uh, well, you were, he was boasting about his puzzle making abilities <laughs> earlier on. But so the safe houses are going to be kind of a customization and social hub. But I think really what I've got time to ask you about, which mm. is what everyone really wants to know about, which is the zombie modes, which have grown from, you were saying earlier, something you guys were kind of toying around with at lunch in, you know, back at World of War, yeah. and is now a huge attraction for the game. And but totally different, kind of thematically and in appearance to the to the main campaign. It looks amazing. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure, yeah, so the, the zombie offering on the disc is called Shadows of Evil and it's a, a 1930s, 1940s film noir map. Uh, so we have these kind of uh, broken characters, these broken archetypes. Um, 
and uh, they're kind of struggling to understand uh, why there's a zombie horde running around. <laughs> and the uh, the shadow man, he kind of appears and says, "Follow me. I will I will lead you to redemption." And the, um, are, we, are we talking about the cast? Is that going sure. on Monday? So because yeah. that was the thing that struck me. I mean, I recognised Ron Perlman. Somehow I didn't recognise Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> uh, Heather Graham, R- Robert Picardo, who's coming back, um, and Sean Sean McDonough. Is that his? I know uh, his Neil McDonough. Neil McDonough. Sorry, I know him from a hundred different cop shows in the US. Yeah. It's an amazing cast. But why? Uh, and, and the level looks incredible. This kind of Art Deco 1930s noir uh, mm. setup. What made you? You know, what what when you guys were sitting around saying we can set this anywhere? What was the attraction of, of that? Oh wow, so uh, for the setting, it was really like, how do we kind of bring different artistic styles together? So it was the deco and the nouveau, kind of bringing those two together. So you have this very kind of strong masculine feel, but then also the kind of feminine nouveau style, which kind of gives you this, I kind of recognize the city, but I kind of don't kind of feel about it. And then for the cast, it was like, we made, you know, this is a little bit less sexy, but we make these kind of matrixes where we talk about the kind of different uh, performance, you know, be it the pitch, because you have to make an ensemble cast. So we wanted actors whose voices kind of complemented each other uh, and then also would kind of fit with the overall aesthetic and style of the, of the map as well. So as we kind of put the cast together and the world kind of came together, um, it really just turned into a certain feel. And that's that's really from a campaign or from a zombie's point of view, that's always what you're trying to do. You're trying to invoke a feel in people when they see something they feel something or they think I've always seen this or I've always known this yes. uh, and that's where we got to the Shadow Deep and it's funny because it seems like Black Ops uh, 3 the campaign is quite serious it, it's issues which are facing us today technology and, and kind of consciousness and those sorts of things and then this mode really is still the place just to have loads of fun absolutely <laughs> it's, um, it's just different it, different places right people are in different moods at different times you know um, it's the whole the whole game is, is based around fun you know be it kind of campaign whether you want to kind of get into the deep uh, uh, ethics questions of the campaign, or you want to just kind of run through and kind of play with the different systems and have a good, good old uh, blast. Uh, that's there for you. Maybe in more of the uh, uh, the quick fire modes, so you want to play multiplayer, mm. or maybe you want to kill the undead, right, and jump into zombies. Mm. It's really about what kind of mood you're in, um, and, and we're all in different moods at different points of the day, right? Mm. So thank you very much for showing us that today. It felt like a huge information drop, and we're going to have loads more coming up on Black Ops Three. So stay with us on Access. Uh, subscribe to the channel.